Good morning, afternoon, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Last time we talked and discussed different theories of personality. Today we're going to be expanding on that conversation with Unit 7, Topic 6, where we'll focus on the psychoanalytic theories of personality. One of the people we talked about in our last video was Sigmund Freud, who studied the unconscious mind. Freud believed that most of our mind was hidden, and our personality is influenced and shaped by our ego, id, and superego. Remember, the id wants instant gratification. It's located in our unconscious and strives to satisfy our basic drive. The superego is located in our pre-conscious and it's our moral guidance. The superego often counters the id and tells us how we should act. Lastly, there is the ego, which is located in our conscious mind. It's the decider between the id and the superego. Now, Freud believed that individuals develop their personality early in life. He believed that people went through different psychosexual stages. Each stage has a conflict or a challenge, and it's based on a specific erogenous zone of the body. The first stage is the oral stage, which happens from birth to 18 months old. Here individuals will focus on oral stimulation by sucking or chewing on things like their thumb or a pacifier. The next stage is the anal stage, which occurs from around 18 months to 36 months. Here an individual gets satisfaction from being able to control their bowel movements. This is when potty training occurs. Next is the phallic stage, which starts around three years old and goes until around six years old. This is when children may start feeling their genitals and exploring their body. This is also when children start to identify as male or female. Here children start to notice that they have certain body parts that other individuals in their lives have and don't have. From there we go into the latency stage, which goes from around the age of six to puberty. Here an individual has a variety of sexual feelings that are hidden. There is no new challenge. Rather, any fixations or feelings the child has experienced in the past remain and are mostly hidden. This stage is a phase of dormant sexual feeling. Lastly, we have the genital stage, which goes from puberty on. Individuals here will get sexual pleasure from sexual behavior, such as masturbation or sexual intercourse. As an individual progresses through these stages, the ego and the superego learn about what you should do and what you should not do. Remember, if an individual is not able to progress through these stages and has unresolved conflicts, it may cause them to fixate on a particular stage that they did not overcome. Also remember, Freud believed that all these stages happen on an unconscious level. Now over time, people continued to study Freud's work and expanded on it. Eventually, they started to focus on more of the conscious mind instead of just the unconscious. Eventually, Freud's psychoanalytic theory was known as the psychodynamic theory, which is a more updated view on Freud's original ideas. Now in this video and the last video, we talked about how the ego controls the id and the superego, and how both the superego and the id are at odds with each other. Freud believed that this internal conflict could sometimes cause us to experience anxiety. He believed that the ego needed a way to protect or defend itself against the wants of the id and the superego. Freud believed that the ego would have to use these defense mechanisms to protect itself and reduce anxiety. These defense mechanisms would often focus on distorting reality and would happen unconsciously. Freud believed that the repression was the most basic mechanic that the ego will use to cope with anxiety. But over time, there became multiple defense mechanisms. Some were proposed by Freud and others who followed Freud. Depending on the situation, we might act differently. On the screen right now, you can see a bunch of different defense mechanisms that we use to protect ourselves when we become stressed or anxious. Depending on the situation, we might act differently. For example, when confronted with a life setback, we might regress instead of dealing with the setback. We may turn to seek protection from our parents or family. This is regression. If we are upset about a particular decision or a person, we may project. Here is when an individual will hide their own frustrations by saying others are also upset with the decision or person. This is projection. Or we might see us react to a setback by displacing our anger towards someone or something else. For example, if you didn't get into that college you wanted and you go back to your house and yell at your little brother instead of processing the setback. Or maybe we see an individual just deny the setback entirely and just pretend like they didn't care in the first place. These are just a couple of examples of defense mechanisms that individuals use to help reduce their anxiety and protect themselves. You can see the other examples on the screen right now. Each of these allow us to cope with real world events and our ever ongoing conflict between our id and superego. And just like that, another topic review video is done. Now you know the drill, answer the questions on the screen and check your answers in the comment section down below. As always, if you find value in these videos, consider subscribing and supporting the channel. And make sure you check out that ultimate review packet. It's a great resource that can help you get an A and a 5 on that national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time online.